David Harris on behalf of the defendant, Michael Noah. I believe at this time um, we'll be asking for a continuance, but to set this case right plea. And we wish the defendant to enter into the plea within the next two weeks, but we are going to suspend the sentence for asking 60 days uh, so that then the defendant can surrender. July 7th. Sainetta's most notorious debate partner, Brother Polite, is set to plead guilty to his 2021 sexual battery charges. So essentially, he had denied these charges. These are serious allegations. There is always a lot behind the scenes uh, that the public is not going to be able to see. So Polite allegedly took his girlfriend's 14-year-old daughter to some kind of after-party gig at the club. According to Predator Polite, the club was closed when they got there. Uh, yeah, close to you because you came with a 14-year-old girl, fucking pervert. The plight of Predator Polite, a feat once formidable, is inching its way into reality, a reality that will be harder than the ex-con he refused to portray, yet one he will inevitably have to face on July 7th. Brother Polite is what I call a prison trophy. There are people in prison that are never going home and a good majority of them have children. When you get a guy like Brother Polite, who is completely incapable of being honest with himself, who essentially has mentally trained himself to never accept the fact that he's a predator, who has proclaimed publicly via social media that he, in fact, is the victim here, and it's the bloggers and YouTubers smutting his name up that are in the wrong, all of these justifications on top of his willful plea to Chester charges, will serve as an incentive for nothing to lose inmates to either permanently debilitate him or just end his life. He is the trash, frustrated, no parole in their future. Inmates look forward to stabbing in the face. Unless Polite is in protective custody, I pray that officers accidentally mix up paperwork and stick him in general population. Brother Polite's charges aren't much of a surprise considering he has been supportive of disgraced and discredited Dr. York. Dr. York was the leader of the cult Nuwabian Nation. York eventually established a wide variety of secular religions which combined elements of cryptozoology, Christianity, black nationalism, UFO religions, and conspiracy theories. So basically, this York guy had a following of a few hundred people who put him on a godlike pedestal. Eventually, they built a compound in Georgia where York has members of the religion segregated by gender with males and females assigned to live in different buildings. He also had the children separated from their families placed in their own buildings as well. This is what these sick hybrid predator cult leader f**ks do. They isolate their victims while simultaneously destroying the same families who view them as a savior. Who was a fanatic follower of Dr. York even to this day? Brother Polite. The defendant has been essentially terrorizing the victim. I mean, the victim's 14 years old, and uh, there's since, been a since, lot of... Since, being, since the arrest? Since the arrest, Judge. He's been very communicative on... Uh, he's been very vocal on social media, on... Uh, there's been videos of the victim drugged by this defendant leaked online. Um, Your Honor, on this case, we do have DNA showing that the defendant's sperm was on the victim's clothing. Alas, Brother Polite believes, just like his idol, Dr. York, that he stands completely innocent of the charges against him. One has to ask himself how his sperm, how his seminal fluids ended up on a 14-year-old girl's clothing. Keep in mind, Polite reintroduced his child to her mother in a drunken, drugged state with visible physical damage done to her mouth. The girl said she awoke to Polite's fingers in her mouth. The victim alleges Polite was trying to get her to throw up. I'm assuming he did this in a last-ditch ditch effort to make her appear more lucid to her mom when he rendezvoused with her. Believe it or not, a Google search on Dr. York will produce propaganda sites that make statements like Dr. York was kidnapped or claiming that his ability to unite religions, acts of humanity, and community service was on an unprecedented scale. Yet the only scale that sick, demented, twisted broke was the enormous amount of sexual abuse claims made against him. Claims that supporters state are unfounded and entirely manifested by the, quote, oppressors. It's been reported that the number of sexual abuse claims made against York surpassed four digits. Four digits thousand plus the district attorney literally had to stop stacking the counts at 200 
fearing a jury might not believe York or anyone else could possibly be capable of sexual abuse on such a scale. York's only real claim of fame will always lie in the fact that no one person had ever been prosecuted for that many counts of child molestation. York and Brother Polite both shared the belief that women should remain subservient to men whose roles should never extend past the duties of being a wife or a mother. York stressed the significance behind a strong and healthy family life, yet he maintained full sexual access to other men's wives and children. No doubt this behavior played into Polite adopting a belief in polygamy. If the Honorable Dr. York, Polite's God, can partake in sexual perversion, then he could too. If a man proclaims to be God while simultaneously engages in sexual battery or the molestation of children as young as seven, then that is no God. That is Lucifer in the flesh. <laughs>